Hello everybody, welcome back to another quick video. I just saw Adam back, the Hashcash Blockstream legend himself, talk about something on X tonight called the Months to MNAV cover, which is quite interesting. Think of this as a stopwatch for every Bitcoin treasury company. The stopwatch starts the moment the market assigns a premium above book value of the Bitcoin and stops when fresh Bitcoin accumulation fully earns back that premium. The shorter the time, the stronger the torque. From an investor's perspective, a low MMC is a flashing neon sign that a company is converting capital into Bitcoin with ruthless efficiency. You might be asking, why does a time metric matter in a universe priced in money? Because on a Bitcoin balance sheet, time converts directly into incremental ownership of a finite asset. If a firm compresses the MMC from 12 months to six, it is in effect having the temporal distance between price and value. That having a nod to Bitcoin's own rhythm creates a convex payoff. Each day shaved from the countdown delivers proportionally more future upside than the last. Before the stopwatch can run, the audience needs one number, the MNAV. Multiple of the net asset value is calculated by dividing the company's equity market cap by the fair value of its Bitcoin holdings. A reading of one means the shares traded exactly at their Bitcoin backing. Anything above one reflects the premium investors are willing to pay for management skill, balance sheet leverage, brand, velocity of future Bitcoin purchases. There's a whole lot of reasons why the MNAV might be higher than one. MNAV is in effect the price to Satoshi's ratio where traditional analysts obsess over price to earnings or price to book, Bitcoin treasury analysts like myself watch price to proof of work. With MNAV, we capture both sides of the ledger, the monetary gravity of hard cap supply and the market's belief that this particular team can pull more gravity into its orbit. Premiums by themselves can look expensive, even reckless, until they're paired with production speed. MMC connects price to execution. It reframes the premium as a payback period, translating a multiple into a countdown clock. The analytical question shifts from is 3X too high to can the desk buy enough Bitcoin fast enough to justify that 3X MNAV? That subtle shift makes valuation instantly intuitive for both traditional value investors and hyper Bitcoinized people like me. Put differently, MNAV tells you how high you're jumping while the MMC tells you how long the landing pad needs to slide under you. A high jump with a slow pad means a crash. A high jump with a motorized pad that rockets into place is a Michael Jordan poster dunk, nothing but net. Here's the countdown clock in numeric form. You have the components, which are the MNAV multiple, divided by the Bitcoin yield multiple, and then you're gonna times that by a period of length in months. A company that doubles its Bitcoin per share every quarter has a 2X yield across three months. If its shares currently traded a 3.3 MNAV, it takes roughly five months to work off that premium. From there, every additional Satoshi drops straight into upside. So I want you to notice the inverse relationship. If you boost Bitcoin yield by just 10% and the MMC slips by the same proportion, that means incremental operational efficiency produces linear reductions in the countdown. But the market response to a shrinking countdown is typically non-linear. Investors love velocity compress the clock and multiples often stretch super linearly. Let's talk about my favorite new investment, MetaPlanet. MetaPlanet illustrates how lethal this metric can be, folks. The company trades at a around three MNAV right now. Let's call it 3.3 right now. Over the last quarter, it effectively doubled its Bitcoin per share, a two times yield in three months. Divide the 3.3 by two, and then you multiply that by three, and the math lands at about five months. We can go deeper. If you project the same stacking pace for another three quarters and MetaPlanet torrents an extra 8,500 Bitcoin onto the balance sheet, that reduces next year's MNAV even if the price stays flat, simultaneously compressing MMC toward three months. At that point, the equity goes from discounted call option to synthetic Bitcoin leverage engine with a turbocharger made of Tokyo capital markets. Strategy, formerly MicroStrategy, my dearest baby, we love you, Papa Sailor. Carries a MNAV of 2.16 right now. Impressive, but its historical purchase cadence stretches the payback to roughly 19 months. It is still an outstanding Bitcoin accumulator, don't get me wrong, yet its countdown is ticking 
more slowly. Investors betting on MSTR accept a longer wait before the new Bitcoin neutralize the premium that they're paying for today. The key nuance is strategy self funds via convertible notes and perpetual preferreds, structures that may widen the equity upside when Bitcoin rallies, but they also dilute Bitcoin per share during the raise. That trade-off elongates the MMC in a raising rate environment. Every extra month of MMC is a profit and loss tax on patience. If you lay the two clocks side by side, the contrast is pretty stark. MetaPlanet covers its premium about 3.8 times faster than strategy does. If markets normalize premiums by speed alone, which is an assumption, not a guarantee, MetaPlanet could re-rate toward an eight time MNAV multiple without appearing any more expensive than strategy looks right now. Let's stress test that idea. Suppose Bitcoin slumps 25% during the re-rate window. MetaPlanet's lower MMC still rewinds the premium in under seven months while strategy crosses the two year mark. In relative terms, MetaPlanet's equity soaks up the drawdown like a sponge then reinflates sooner, offering a volatility adjusted sharp ratio the market has still not yet priced in. So what does the stopwatch mean for capital allocation? First, a low MMC equals high optionality. The equity can expand its multiple while the premium is shrinking in calendar time. Second, the MMC becomes a capital allocation lens exposing which treasuries spin equity and debt into Bitcoin at the fastest clip. Third, it functions as a rotation signal inside a Bitcoin treasury basket. Size up positions where MMC is compressing trim those where the clock stalls or extends. Running this metric on Bitcoin treasury companies could be very valuable because you'll get to time the MNAV if you're looking to trade a stock, if you're looking to buy low, sell high. This is something that um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, but thank you, Adam Back, for bringing this to my attention. A pretty fascinating take on what's happening in the Bitcoin treasury space.